In this third video, we look at the last part of our analytical report, always refer to the case of uh, the democratic primaries for the um, days that I told you that we extracted from online news, so November 10 to November 25 in 2019. This graph is about discourse topics. So imagine you have to read uh, 50,000 tweets in few hours to tell your boss what people are saying about your company. It's a difficult task. So with this modeling of topics, we can automatically extract the main arguments, the main topics from the discourse, and we can represent them through bubbles of words. So each box, it's a bubble of word, is a cluster in the network and represents a specific topic. So if we go close to one argument, we can see words, we can also adjust the look and see uh, which is characterizing a brand or the other. For example, we can also see where the brands are primarily located. So we see that as expected, most of the candidates are located in a topic um, cluster that is about elections. So we have election, presidential, vote, debate, campaign, Senate, poll. And here we also have in red all the brands, all the candidates that uh, run for the primaries. Peculiarly, the brands, so the candidate who won the primaries, it's not primarily located in this cluster, but is in another cluster. Let me see if I find it. Yes, he is here. In topic one, we find Biden. And this is more uh, related to Donald Trump, an investigation, Ukraine, uh, inquiry. So it's a totally different topic. It's not that Biden, it's not also related to the other topics. And so the one about the vote and the elections, but it has a stronger link with this other topic here, intelligence, Ukraine, and so on. You can also look at the strength of links between topics here, for example, depending on the, on the sides of mm, the arc connecting every topic. So every node that represents a topic. We can see this even better if we scroll down, we can have a list of the words representing each topic. So it's easier maybe from here to read them. Again, it's repeating the words that were in the graph and with importance score. So for each word, you get an importance score that tells you how much that word is representative of that topic. And then we can also look at the relationship between brand and topics. The network graph will put brands in their prevalent topic. So, for example, we had Warren Sanders and Batty Jeg in the topic about elections that you see here in blue. It was topic number four. If I am not wrong, let's, ch let's check it. Yes, it's that one. And Batty Jeg was in topic number one. You can also see then not only the primary uh, topic, but also how much each, each brand associates uh, with the other topics in the network. And so here we see that uh, Biden also associates with the topic of elections and that associations with some other topics are very little for all brands, like topic nine counts very little here. So if we remove it from the graph, we don't even know this. If we remove the one of elections, we really know this. Lastly, we can also have a ranking of topics in terms of relevance. And so here you see that the topic one is the most relevant. So surprisingly, not the topic related to the elections, topic four, but topic one, the one related to Ukraine and the impeachment and Trump was the one that most appeared on the news. And on this matrix, you also find the relationships among topics. So you see how strong is the link between two topics. We see, for example, here for, from the color of these dark cells, that topic one and topic two are those most uh, related. But there is also, for example, a strong relationship between topic three and topic two. That concludes our 
short video. You find more information about the Semantic Brand Score on the website semanticbrandscore.com where you find other tutorials and uh, literature, so scientific papers to read or other informative articles and feel always free to drop us a line if you have more questions.